clouds left over from that storm system, but it's a cut today, Mary Alice. It sure is good to see the sun again. Hope it holds. Yeah. <laughs> Morning, boss. Morning. Good morning. Got me some coffee. I know, thank the Lord. Ah, <laughs> uh, sugar first. Mmm. This could get fat. No, mm, uh, you'll burn it off. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> Anyone here want to attend a wedding? We've been clear to Canada and back, and we're getting set to do it again. Yep. Just us and 11 other guys. One of these days, Roger Duncan. One of these days what? You're going to have to get your own coffee. Yeah, and sugar. Looks like we finally got the harvest, huh? Uh, I don't know. You want to cut weed as wet as this? Ah, uh, you give that sun a couple hours. It's not gonna dry out before that squall gets here. Not enough water in those clouds to comb your hair, Cram. Yeah. I got other farms to cut, Walt. Twenty-eight of them from here to Saskatchewan. Well, I know how long that road is. All of them are my old customers. Yeah, well, I'm not forgetting that you brought me into the business. Well, you're not forgetting that this is my crop. And you promised to cut it first. Walt. I've lost three days already. Now, you know better than anybody, it's not cost-effective to have 12 men sitting on their hands while there's more rain on the way. You're not walking away. Well, you wouldn't have this business if you hadn't married my sister. Just don't start on that now. You know from well that I bought this outfit from you. I wouldn't have sold it to you if you hadn't married Aggie. You're not dumping me like you dumped her. You know, Walt, until you said that, I was going to try and come back here in a few days. Saddle up! Keep on barking. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Looks like he got my job for a while. Do the best I can. Don't you worry about Callie. She's in good hands with T-Bone. <laughs> Why didn't you go with him? You're his foreman. Yeah, but I'm your son. What happened? Crab ran off and left him. Mom, he couldn't wait around any longer. He was losing money. Well, we've got a crop to get in. If we don't harvest it, we just might lose this farm! Well now, Walt, you don't have $130,000, do you? Over here, 
We got something I think we can talk some business on. This motor needs a massage. Well, I think I told you it's got more than 4,000 hours on it. I bet. It's not our luxury model, Walt. And we're only talking $7,000 here. How long would it take you to replace that engine? I'll have it in there tomorrow. See, all my mechanics are out in the field fixing breakdowns. Everybody's cutting today. Uh, as, as you know. I'll take it now. I'll work on it myself. Roger will come by and pick up both of them tomorrow if you give them to me for 15000 including the rebuilt engine. Well, could you put uh, 4000 down now? Give you three. Well, that leaves us a bit of paperwork. And a few more bank payments. It's 2 a.m. If you're driving that tomorrow, it's only the tired and the stupid that get hurt on the combines. Your words, Walt. <coughs> Covers both of us. There's a lot more here than I figured. How's it feel to be working for your dad again? Well, pay isn't too good, but the hours sure are long. <laughs> Anything on tomorrow's weather? Clear and dry. Roger, looks like we're out of business. Let's take him in. Generations have hung on here through locusts, drought, Comanches, depression, dust storms, and the farm policies. I bet they thought about leaving, but they didn't. And I'm not going to be the first. Here, Alice, go put your dress on. Now you're talking about cutting your way to Canada. You already owe us. Now you owe on two combines, you want to buy another. Yeah, and two grain trucks. Do you know how many custom cutters went under between here and the Dakotas last year? Listen, Al, I'm finished if I don't try. I got no crop, I got no income, and I got no choice. Do you know how much this bank lost in bad loans last year? Why don't you go tell that to the chaplain? Maybe I ought to go down the road where they know me a little Sit bit. down, Walt. Sit down. Anyone who turns down as many government subsidies as you do is going to get a loan from me. Sit down. Now, well, let's see. We already have a note on your place. You still hold title to your dad's old farm, free and clear? Oh, that's not a farm anymore. It's just the family home and a few acres for Walt and me for later on. It's our security. Well, it's worth a little bit. Uh, that's not part of the deal. If you want to see my neck on the chopping block too, you thick-headed old gunny? There's one stringent condition on this loan, like it or not. As you know, our bank took over Joe Connolly's place down the road from you. The hailstorm missed it. I'm requiring you to make us your first customer. Drive a pretty hard bargain now. Simplify. Stand up. I mean, you're going to cut some more. We'll rest when it rains, not before. If anyone doesn't like the sound of this, you can leave. All right? From now on, there's no quitting. Not by me, and not by you. If you ever want to see the other half of your pay. Get out of this head. That cost the farmer money. 
If you have it set too low, you will dig rocks. That costs me money. I can't afford it. Everything I've got is tied up in this operation. Now, when this header is set at the right height and this reel is set at the right speed, you will lay all your grain in the auger, not out on the ground. We are not in the bird feed business. One other thing, safety. Never, never leave that cab while that engine is running. You walk around the live combine with those V belts and those roller chains, they can snag your trousers or your shirt and pull you in, in which case your mother will receive a body bag full of protein-rich dog food. Any questions? Sure. Okay, let's go. Wheatwhackers? Yeah, what do you got? Peter Silvera. Tight end from KU. Plays a real nice game of football when he isn't in the lockup. Judge Tuthill says you used to take on a hard case now and then. Yeah, I reckon the judge wants to see his old team back in the Orange Bowl. <laughs> Where are you from? New Mexico. Santa Rosa. Do you drive equipment? I've driven everything from taxis to tandem trucks. Uh-huh. Well, I can use a truck driver. I'd like to drive a combine. You work for me, you drive what I tell you. All right. All you have to do is to get a ticket or slap someone. And it's bye-bye football. I hear you, all right? All right, and you'll be off the gray rock, you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you heard what you have at stake in this run, Walt. I just want to say, I uh, wish you luck. I appreciate that, Bob. Thanks. Roger, get Silvera here squared away. <coughs> just put your gear in that pickup truck for now. We're leaving in the morning and we still need one more driver. That's Tad Coleman in that brown car there. Who? Mm -hmm. Tad Coleman, the college guy with the eyes that bothered you. Oh, yeah, they snickered at me. Said you'd let him know. Well, tell him to get out of the car before it grows on him. We'll try to make him rich. I know. What's the deal? Red doesn't want us to cut his wheat. He's got another crew? Yeah, Walt Duncan. <laughs> Cock a doodle doo. All right, morning glories. Time to blossom. The bacon's frying. Let's go. Go to show Mr. Brayton we know how to put a little grain in his bin, so let's rise and shine. It's bad enough getting up in the dark without having to listen to chicken fried adenoids. And how old Pedro can sleep through it. My name is Peter. P-E-T-E-R. And my mother's family was farming New Mexico before the captain of the Mayflower was even born. Compared to you immigrants, I am the original pilgrim. Yeah? So where does the top job from KU get himself a pair of handcuffs? Too many people calling you Pedro? Jock. I talked Braden into giving you this job. I want you to hear me. I want you to stay away from the rest of my customers, you hear me? You got to be a high cutter, Crib. 
Price of grain's too low to leave any of it out there in the field. Yeah, well, I get the wheat to market when it's ripe and dry. Like mine? Mine was ripe and dry for two days before the hail got it. I wouldn't even be out here if you hadn't walked away. Walt, I want you to hear me now. Or else we're going to be beating each other with short sticks up the road. And I swear to you, I'll have your farm on the auction block. You'll be sitting on your tail on the front porch of the county rest home babbling to yourself. Now just stay away from the rest of my customers. You got it? Listen, there's a whole country out there. It's called the land of the free. I intend to cut every farm that'll hire me between here and Canada. So don't get in my way. Okay, pal, it's your funeral. You guys must be scraping bottom. You buying these junk combines, hiring wet box? Silvera! I had no idea he understood English, Walsh. Well, I wouldn't say anything in front of him. You know me. Silvera, so, get back to work. I'll win, Walsh. I got the equipment. You want to lose your farm? So be it. Roger Dodger. Calla. Oh. Miss me, huh? You meet me somewhere tonight. I don't know. We can't scare up any work today. Uncle Crab wants to go to Wayne Livingston's early. Mm. I hate to interrupt you lovebirds, but we still got a part to pick up. Uh, you know how your pa loves to wait. I love you. Come on now. Hi, you sure are pretty. Thank you. Bend your elbow? Yeah. It looks a lot worse than it is. Grover! Bring the first aid! I'm not hurt that bad, Mr. Duncan, really. No, but you might have been. Didn't I tell you guys never leave that cab while the engine is running? Shut it down? I just thought I'd tell you didn't think. That's a problem. Get down the road, kid. But Mr. Duncan! No. Listen. I can't afford an accident. I said you're down the road. Yeah, he'll live. Oh, listen, Dakota. Next time you tell me something's wrong, say it a little louder, will you? The bearings in this one are about to go. You're gonna have to send somebody into town before that dealer closes. Hey, wants cash from now on. Cash? Yeah, we went over the credit line a long time ago. I don't have any more cash. Hey, t -Bon. You guys are all loaded up. What do you say we get up to Livingston's and cut some meat? I just saw Livingston over at the cafe. He was looking for you. Wayne's in town? Yeah. Came by to say he's not going to need us. He's getting Walt Duncan to cut his crop. So, what do I tell the crew? Tell them they got another night off. Is that it? That's it. Somebody's been messing around up here. These filters full of chaff. Let me see that.
We're going to have to change every one of the filters and flesh out the fuel tanks. That is an all-day job. That's right. You and Dakota take care of it. I'm going to go see Hobie. Taking a deposit. He knows how to lock us out. Yeah. Well, we can't afford to lose any more days. Tad put our card up on the board. My daddy always said he wouldn't trust his crop to any harvester who didn't grow his own wheat. A cutter who got every last kernel to market. You know, a man who, who cuts every dry minute because he knows what a sudden hailstorm can do to a year's earnings. Who are you talking about? Walter Duncan. Yes, sir, he is a square-toed, straight-thrashing Scotsman. Cuts ditch to ditch. Doesn't leave enough summer fallow for a, for a rabbit to live on. Seems like I heard of him a ways back. Before a cart, eh? You probably did. He's been cutting for 37 years. Oh, what is the Luga Troy? Delicious damsels, girls even. Uh, excuse me, ladies. Uh, could you tell us where it's happening in town, where, where the music is and the dancing? Uh, we like to make new friends. I'll bet you do. Oh, uh, there's a prairie schooner downtown. Yeah, prairie schooner. I don't know whether you ladies realize the caliber of fun that has arrived with the Duncan Custom Cutters. Um, as soon as we get rid of this grain, there's going to be merriment, fun, and pleasures beyond your wildest dreams. A good time, even. That's right. Look who just pulled in. Where are you going? Uh, to my truck. Could you uh, spare us a vital moment, a small act of crucial kindness? Um, I need your help. Anything about trucks? Oh, oh, you bet I do. Hey, Bucky! You got a screwdriver? How you doing, little darling? Not bad. Hi there. Hi. What's wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> These girls are cute. Woo! Why don't you uh, back the screw up? I <laughs> sure do appreciate y'all helping us. Well, it's no trouble at all. You're not in town with the others. Might bump into Hogan's, man. So they call you a few names. Is that all it takes? You're learning. You're thinking first. Listen, there's a little steakhouse on the outside of town where your dinner hangs over the edge of the table. Nobody's ever been offended in there. I'm buying. All right. I'll grab a shower. Huh? Well, like flash, like tag, blink, blink, hi, kiss, kiss, goodbye. Well, maybe we can work something out. 
And it's been almost a year since uh, this thing got started. Yeah? Since the swimming hole in Montana? Oh, since you first noticed me. <laughs> I want to see you a long time before oh. that, way before that. You know, Calo, we need one more driver. Roger, I can't come work for you. Come on, we do crap bookkeeping and cooking. It's my uncle, Roger. He took care of me when my folks quit. This may be the way your harvest crews open their pores down in Kansas. But you're in Nebraska now, and we don't traffic this sort of mayhem. All I can say, Your Honor, is we're sick, sorry, and sober. You left out a word. I was looking for the word ashamed. Hogan, the uh, estimated damages of your combined combat was $2,600. Your Honor, these men have been working long, hard, hot hours. You needn't tell me about the harvest crews. I worked one from the panhandle to Calgary. You just didn't figure we had a jail big enough to hold your uh, rowdy pack. Well, we do have accommodations give us a chance to make some inquiries over our new computer, see if there are any prior offenses. How many Kansas towns your people have mutilated? Well, I just had a call from my good friend Dick Barber, who tells me that unless Mr. Duncan's combines are in his field today, He'll be in here next week filing Chapter 11. Now, that's bankruptcy proceedings, and I believe him. Normally, I'd sentenced a lot of you to four consecutive Sundays in church with no chance of parole. Times being what they are. You're a dwindling breed. Part farmer, part gypsy. Part stupid. Now, who's going to pay these expenses? We will, Your Honor. He started it. He will. The judge said it was mutual combat. Quiet, quiet. We'll, we'll just let Susie Anthony decide this. Kansas girl. Is that fair enough? Yes, sir. Agreed. Agreed. What? Tails. Paid the $2,600, Mr. Hogan. Uh, I can't think of Justice was better served. The Combine Demolition Derby is week after next in Keeperville. If you've got the guts to enter it, we can settle this once and for all, Walt. If you don't show, I'll just know you've gotten too senile to cut it. I'll be there. Harvest Lecter is my name. That's my spread over yonder. Oh, yeah. How you doing? I saw some people working there earlier. Not anymore. They have to quit. That'd be with a half-harvested crop. Why was that? Well, I got some rocks and a few gullies. Ain't never been no problem for a careful cutter. Uh-huh. Don't go till 8 in the morning. Your truck driver... Wait a second, Mr. Duncan. You saying we're going to be cutting 24 hours a day? That's right, non-stop. Well, what about the dew? I mean, you know elevators ain't going to take wet grain. The forecast is for dry nights. Besides, I'm going to be checking the moisture content. You truck well, what truck happens if this combine breaks down? What are we going to do then? We're going to fix it. Now, Dakota here is working on the other one, and I'm already out looking for a third. Man, you mean you're out looking for another clunker? What's the matter with you, Grover? Spit it out. What's on your mind? You worried about the other half of your paycheck? Other half? <laughs> oh, we're going to be lucky to see any pay the way you're headed. You know, we're going to wind up just like that busted crew Tad was telling us about over at Grand Fort. Owners flew off and left the crew begging. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you something. This crew is going to be paid in full even if I have to go bankrupt doing it. In the meantime, we're just going to suck up our guts and we're going to cut ahead. Right. You can suck without me, Mr. Duncan. This is crazy, man. I'm out of here.
men are going to show you how to use our new machines. Hop to it. Come on. Let's check it out. Okay, boys, let's go to work. These men are going to show you how to use our new machines. Hop to it. Come on. Let's check it out. Mary Alice, what Easy, are you going Walter. to do? Now, listen, you put up your papa's land for uh -huh, this, didn't right. you? Right. Well, listen, they are... I don't want those machines. You know how much they cost? $130,000 each. Are you going to listen to me? They are repossessed. They are more than half paid by another cutter. Yeah, who went belly up, taking a risk, just like me. They didn't cut like you. And they didn't have a bookkeeper like me. Well, some bookkeeper you are. You know, you have gambled away the only security you have in life. You have absolutely nothing to fall back on. Nothing. Walt, you're the only security that I need. The one safe haven is us. If there's any falling back to do, we're going to do it together. You better go over there and hear that instruction or your crew's going to be humming and chugging without you. The crew from the bankrupt harvest company's in town if you want to take Mr. a look. Mr. Duncan? Yeah. Guess I kind of flew off the handle back there, huh? You know, it's just, it's just these stories that Tad was telling us that sort of shook me up. Guess you'll be needing some men with all this new equipment, huh? You know, the thing about quitting is, every time you do it, you get a little smaller. Pretty soon, everything looks too big. Mary Alice will write out your check. Good luck to you, son. What do you think? Well, I think you got your combines now. You can go back. Up north, tell those big spreads we'll be on our way. Well, are we going to cut any more of those rock quarries like Schlechter's place? Man needs help, we're going to give it to him. Sorry, pal, but I was born in America. Should I get deposits, Captain? That'll keep old Hogan's Man's man. word's good enough for me. Well, the reason I mention it is because No deposits. We're gonna... well, you best be on your way. And I'm doing all this for the same bonus as everyone else? That's right. Even though I'm the one that's getting all the work? They're doing all the work. Look at those beauties. We ought to put flags on them. What do you say, Roger? Let's do it. Wall has new combines? Hey, they're intercooled, turbo charged. I have 24 foot headers. Oh, we can't afford new combines. You, you know what he's doing, don't you? you? The only reason, the only reason that he's buying them is to try to break my back. Drag me down with it. Where's our customer list? Walt's finding his own customers. You don't have to worry about that. How do you know what Walt's doing? I bumped into Roger yesterday. Oh, you just bumped into him? Yeah. Calla, I want you to stay away from the Duncans, and I mean all of them. Now, I don't want any of them knowing anything about what we're doing. You understand that? You guys were like brothers. He was best man at your wedding. That's right. Then he dumps my wheat in the street. Oh, come on. You guys played pranks on each other all the time. What about the dead skunk on the engine? Yeah, well, that's before he claimed I killed his sister. Shh. I mean, he doesn't know a thing about it. He never knew what went on. All he cares about is trying to ruin me. That's all he wants, to ruin me. I think it was my wife. Why, Mr. More than anybody? You gotta go see us, son, just as soon as you can. Yeah, I might do that. Did you get a touch of Tad? No. Nobody's heard from him. You haven't seen him. You know, it's been a week. When you do, just make sure you ask him what he was doing talking to Kreb at that derby. Are you sure that was Ted you saw? Yeah, I am real sure. Sure hope that college boy isn't trying to outsmart himself. Do we have any work? 
Now we got that little place up in Willow Creek. Crab doesn't like to cut it anymore. Looking together at the Derby. Now what good could come of that? You can work yourself up into a lather, Walt. Well, you were the Derby. You saw what he tried to do to me. It'd be bad enough if we lost our home, but your papa's place, I'm not gonna give him satisfaction in that. Woman driver. Call from the bank. They got some extra sections of barley for us to cut. Keep us busy the next few days. Oh, it sure must be nice knowing your name still means something up here. See those boys over there? They're cutting clean. They care about their work, even though I'm not watching them. They even care about you, I guess you noticed. I found a driver to fill in for Dad. This little lady is real good. <laughs> what in the world happened? Uncle Crab gave me an absolute final warning about seeing Roger. I just used it up. <laughs> After I talked to the bank and a couple of fellas you used to cut for, you got two other jobs down our way with the Wagstaff brothers. Did they give him a deposit too? We haven't seen Ty Coleman over a week. Well, he got five or six thousand dollars out of our money. What you gonna do about it? You get your crop in, Mr. Schultz, don't you worry. We'll get it. Hope it's not too late. These clouds are building us something serious. You're not scaring me, Walt. Give me time! You're running up quite a bill here. You got some paying to do for the deal that you made with Ted Coleman. With Coleman? He wanted to be my advanced man. I told him I wouldn't trust anybody from your group. I sent him packing. You sent him out to get some deposits in my name. <laughs> What'd he do, skip out on you? You don't want to kill me, Walt. What were you trying to do to me at the Derby? I'm going to take the gun, Dad. What are you gonna do? You gonna shoot me too? This is about Aggie, Walt, and nothing else. You just can't believe that I loved her, can you? I believe you got rid of her. No, he did that to cure her. Kala, shut to up! To get her into a treatment clinic. Kala! What do you mean, a treatment clinic? Are you gonna tell him, or am I gonna have to? Tell me what? Aggie was an alcoholic, Walt. Hogwash. She picked it up while I was on the road. She was alone too much. I never saw her take more than one or two drinks. That's right, you never saw her. She kept it private, especially from you. But you know when she'd get home, Walt, she'd have five, six more. She'd, she'd drink a pint a day. Uncle Crab never wanted to tell you. He knew how you idolized her. She idolized you. Is that true? Do you know anything about this? Is it true? You divorced her? It's the only way I had left to stop her drinking, Walt, to save her. And you know, it worked. Almost. She was on her way to meet me. 
stone sober. The night of the accident. Look. It's a tornado. Right there. All right, let's get this equipment down the bottom of the hill. Come on, get the pick. Get the pick up. Let's go. smashed together and it's going to be at least two weeks of repairs not to mention all the money it's going to oh look who's here who got hurt where have you been i've been getting business all this time well i got into this poker game i met With these guys my money what? how much Take it easy. how much i lost two hundred dollars but i got fifty one hundred Go ahead. Count it. We got three uh, sizable jobs to do, guys. We got a Mr. Schutzel, the Wagstaff brothers. I was hoping you'd let me work off that too. I lost Captain. Work it off? We got no equipment. I'm not going to ask you why you collected these deposits when I told you not to. Yeah, I was hoping you would. Well, I hope you learned your lesson. You're fired. Walt. Thank you. She's all right. I appreciate you coming by, Cram. It's so much more serious. So much worse. You're right. I'm lucky. <laughs> Listen, uh, all that grief I, all that grief I put on you about my sister. I hope you can find a way to forgive me. I guess we just. Both loved her as much as we could, Walt. Did you suffer much damage, Hunter? Yeah, I got hit pretty hard. You know, all of a sudden I got all these jobs and I got no equipment. All of a sudden I got all this equipment and no jobs. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I am, unless you think I'm too old to cut it. Not me, kid. <laughs> 